Time to go over one of the top players in college baseball this season, Jack Caglione. It's draft prospect profile time. Scotty Braun along with Baseball America's J.J. Cooper and Carlos Colazzo. So, Carlos, give us the goods on Jack Cags and how much of an impact he made in the college game, and will it translate to Major League Baseball? Yeah, one of the most impactful players in college baseball over the last three years. I think he's one of the most impressive two-way players we've seen in several years. In terms of pure talent, I don't think there are many players in this draft class that can really stack up with him. He's got probably the best raw power of any hitter in the class, and he can also throw into the upper 90s from the left side, was a consistent Sunday starter for Florida. Uh, the two-way element is fun. I think ultimately the upside is just so much greater as a hitter that as soon as he's in pro ball, he's probably going to start focusing on hitting sooner rather than later. Uh, he made some really impressive adjustments this spring in terms of just his contact rate overall. The walk rate jumped significantly. The strikeout rate was cut. I think those are big improvements for him as a hitter. Uh, but in terms of upside potential, you could really make a case that Jack has maybe the best upside in this entire draft class. He's immensely physical. He led the league in homers a year ago when he was on the same team as Wyatt Langford, who's already in the big leagues. Um, so it's just a lot of power to get excited about. I, I think you hit on it that the two-way, the fact that he's been such a good two-way player in college really does stand out. It also kind of does jump out from a standpoint of, hey, maybe there's even a little bit more. He made massive improvements at the plate this year contact rate, things like that. But he's been bouncing back and forth between two very important and very different jobs. It's going to be fascinating to see if he does focus on hitting full time. Kind of, is there even a little bit more to be unlocked there? But Carlos, I guess the thing that jumps out more than anything is, is can you remember a guy in a draft class who had more raw power, had more just bat to ball, the ball is obliterated kind of mm. collisions home runs as jack does like we've seen evs now again it's a different bat we all acknowledge that <laughs> but we've seen evs that john carlos stanton would raise an eyebrow or show Otani. he's done that pretty consistently the last two years that's the thing that really kind of jumps out for for jack more than anything yeah 100 percent. i mean there there really isn't a hitter i can think of that i would at least have the confidence to say the exit velocities and the top end raw power is equivalent. I mean, there have been some high school players who get big, like future raw power grades, but in terms of doing it right now and, and seeing it in college stadiums against SEC pitching, which is also a key to this, like he has produced against the best competition in college baseball for, for multiple years. We have a 70 grade power projection on his in-game power production. I think there's no question that he's going to have or already does have 80 grade raw power. Um, and yeah, I do think to your point, like, when he's able to just focus on hitting some of these changes that you've seen him make, some of these adjustments that he's made this spring could just start happening more rapidly. He's a, he's a pretty impressive athlete. The one question with his offensive profile is the chase rate. He's an aggressive swinger. He's a free swinger. It's worked out perfectly fine for him in college against pro pitching that maybe is going to be become like an element of his game that he's going to have to focus on more frequently. And maybe in like an anti Paul Skeens, uh, situation when Skeens dropped the bat, he took a huge step forward as a pitcher. Maybe the same can happen with Jack when he stops pitching every week and then focuses just on the hitting. I, I do hate to say it, like I'm not trying to poke holes, but one thing about Jack, and you look at his on base percentage, you go, wow. Mm -hmm. And then you do have to realize, like a lot of those, he didn't even have to look at a pitch because Jack <laughs> is so feared. You saw this in Omaha. Jack's so feared that. A lot of times the opposing, uh, you know, dugout, the coach would look at him and go, nope, you just jogged to first because we're going to try, we're going to try anyone, someone else, anyone else. We are not going to let you beat us. And so he set, we don't know because they're really having, the NCAA has its kept intentional walk records, but we do know he has as many intentional walks as we can find for basically anybody. The other thing you said, 70 power, I, I think it's worth explaining the reason it's 70 I mean, it sounds crazy. It's 70. That's incredibly lofty. <laughs> but Carlos, the reason it's 70 is the contact concern, right? If you were talking about mm -hmm. if you if we had more confidence on the pure bat to ball skills, it's 80 power, right? Like it's not even a question. Yeah. Like if this if Jack hits 260, which I don't know if he will, but if he's hitting 260 as a pro, he's easily getting the 30, 35 homers, you would imagine, just because mm -hmm. that's the kind of power we're talking about here. Yeah, it, it's definitely a case of like knowing the difference between the raw power grade and the in-game power projection. I think this is maybe a separator for him and a guy like Charlie Condon is 
Paglion probably has more raw power. I think Condon has like better pure hitting ability right now, and that might be the biggest difference. But he does have the sort of power where e even if he's not like the best pure hitter in baseball or even a, an above average pure hitter, he has the power to potentially lead the league in homers. And I think a Pete Alonso comparison is a fun one for Jack Caglione because they both attended the same plant high school in Florida. They both attended Florida University, and they both have this first base power over hit profile, uh, although Jack is is left left and 6'5", 217 pounds and has the pitching element. But uh, that's kind of a cool link between him and one of baseball's premier sluggers. So that's the one other thing you just hit on a little bit. Are we talking first base only? Are we talking first base left field maybe if someone wants to get a little bit, you know, adventurous with it? You know, what is his first base DH? Like, I, I can't help but think of, you know, <laughs> hey, I, I'll give Pete Alonso credit. When Pete Alonso, who, speaking of, you know, Florida Gators coming with big, big, big power coming out of uh, out of college, the question at the time was, was Alonso even going to be able to play first base? And Pete Alonso's done yeah. that for a long time. But can can Jack go a step beyond that and go to the outfield? Or is this a first base only profile? I guess never say never. Um, but I would imagine he is probably very likely to be a first baseman. I think it's a case where you probably just put him at first, a position where he's comfortable, where he doesn't have to learn kind of an entirely new defensive just skill set. You let him play there. He's a big target. Um, I don't know if he'll be a plus defender at first base. You're not drafting him to be a plus defender at first base. You're drafting him because he has monstrous power. So I think you put him at first base where he's a big target, where the below average or fringy speed is not going to be really a problem at all. And you just let him go out and match. Um, so anyone who drafts him probably is thinking that long term, he's going to be a first baseman who potentially has a chance to lead the league in homers. Um, the corner outfield would be interesting uh, if, if that does happen. He is a, a good athlete, but I wouldn't bank on that or expect that. Do you know how many 80 grade power uh, or how much 80 grade power you guys hand out to draft prospects in recent history? Can you come up with any names? JJ one, shaking his head and you're the historian here. I don't know if we ended up putting this on him, but Spencer Torgelson at the time, I was like, if you're going to put 80 grade power on anyone, Spencer Torgelson, just with the frequency of his power in college, that would have been the one. And I remember when I initially kind of asked JJ about those grades, he was like, those are like really lofty grades. So I don't even remember if we wound up putting it on him, but. I think we ended up seven. And again, that and Spencer is kind of like a cautionary tale of this because Spencer Torkel said, again, the pandemic year kind of ruined it, but he was on pace to, to break, you know, he broke Barry Bonds home run records in college. Like this is a guy who basically hit everything out in college and he's had trouble translating that in pro ball. That is the concern with all this. When we talk about first base, especially first base heavy profiles. The part where teams seem to get a little leery about this is, is that you're banking so much on the player hitting for power and average. Cause if not it's first base only, he's probably not going to end up being creating any kind of impact. Now in Jack's case, there is kind of this, I don't think we'll ever get there, but there is this backup plan because you are talking about a true two way player, a, you know, you're talking about a guy who, if it, all fell apart and I don't expect it will, but as a hitter, this is a guy who could pitch in the big leagues as well. Now, a lot further away to go, but it's a legit arm. We've seen it in the SEC for multiple years. There's, you know, premium arm speed there. Just a lot further, uh, you know, to go, but it's not an all or nothing here where a lot of times you talk about with first base only guys where you're like, oh, it's either going to be that or we'll be, you know, looking at a guy who's not really, you know, in our plans in a couple of years. That's where it gets a little interesting with Jack because he does have a little bit more versatility than that. Yeah, it's a good backup plan, but also, you know, I'm always crossing my fingers that we have more two-way <laughs> players in the sport. And I think I'm then in the majority of fans that want to see more two-way players. They also don't have to be Shohei Otani. They don't have to be a number one starter and the premier bat, even though obviously that's Jack on the bat side. Like just to have a guy that can, you know, throw a few innings here and there um in high leverage would be awesome so we'll see but anyway uh anything you need to know about the top prospects in the sport both draft prospects and of course prospects once they're drafted baseball america is the spot and stay here for more draft prospect profiles along the way